Hey friends, CJ here with Prodigy Creations. Just wanted to talk very briefly today on the importance of having a mixed template or maybe even a template for when you're ready to start producing a new track. Uh, I do both, so this is kind of a dual purpose template for me. Uh, but the benefit of having something like this is, uh, you know, obviously with templates, um, you have them because you want to start somewhere, but you don't want to start, you know, completely from scratch. Um, and that's what this is for. You know, um, this is something I think every music producer or mixer should do eventually. Maybe not, you know, when you're still learning the ropes. Um, but after you've mixed a couple songs or after you've produced a couple songs and you feel like you're noticing, you know, a, a, uh, a consistent rhythm with what you're doing, then I think you should consider making a template. And uh, all I did was I, I created this with the knowledge of, you know, knowing <laughs> that I have uh, preferred things that I like to use in my mix or my music. Uh, for instance, let me just go to this Vox channel real quick which is vocals, if you're not familiar with that term. Um, so I've noticed that I tend to use this compressor, the CLA-2A, on my vocals almost always. I just like how it sounds on the vocals, so I use it a lot. Um, and so the benefit of having a template is, you know, already having some tracks ready to go. I don't have to create the tracks. Um, they're already in there waiting for me. And uh, I saved it on my desktop as mix template so that whenever I'm ready to go, all I gotta do is click on it and uh, it's all ready for me to go. It's like pretty much a studio, you know? This is my studio, my digital studio. It definitely takes away all of the setting up process, you know, instead of creating from a, a blank uh, Ableton Live setting, uh, I've got my personalized template and uh, it's just going to help me make less moves in the beginning and help me be more productive and, you know, get uh, my music out there faster. You know, I already know I'm going to be using a uh, LA-2A on my Vox most likely. So I just have it ready to go. I don't even have to think about it. Don't have to search uh, for the plugin. Don't have to create the channel. It's all ready to go. So that's the benefit of having a mixed template uh, and I highly encourage you to do it. Uh, but I'll go ahead and go through all of what I've got here if you're interested. So like I said, this is uh, kind of dual purpose for me since I do both mixing and music production. So the first thing I've got here is a reference track channel. Um, this is for whenever I wanna make, I guess, <laughs> I guess what you can call type beats. So like, if I listen to a Janae Aiko track that I really like and I want to try to, you know, emulate it, but also bring in my own style, I'll, I'll get the actual uh, track. So like uh, I did this with Janae Aiko's uh, While We're Young beat. Uh, one time I, you know, recreated that beat, but in my own style. And what I did was I got the the real track from Janae. Uh, I dragged it in probably somewhere close to here because I wanted all this room for my project. Um, so I just dragged it in over here so that it wasn't in the way. I didn't even have to mute it. Um, so yeah, that's what that is for. Just a track to have a song if there is, you know, sometimes I, I'll just create just to create, but if I wanna try to recreate my own version of something, then I'll have this track ready uh, for that song. Okay, next I've got my drums and my bass group. I started putting, uh, I used to separate them, um, having the drums and bass in two different groups, but I started recently putting them together um, just because they're both part of the rhythm section. So uh, it makes sense to me and also it helps me to uh, control my low end better it seems like so I've got a group of uh, drum channels and bass channels ready to go the first one I have is just a, a, a kit within Ableton that I've been building um, this 
This may not necessarily be the kit I end up using in whatever project it is, um, but it's just, you know, something to have on here um, to start, you know, just creating a beat. Um, I can always change the kit later if I wanted to, but at least I have something, you know, to create from. I also have blank uh, drum channels uh, in here in case it is, you know, an outside project that I'm mixing for or something like that. I've got uh, my tracks in here ready to go. And as you can see, I also have color codes, which I also really, really encourage you to do. Um, and <laughs> you may be rolling your eyes at that tip. Uh, I know I would have um, not too long ago, but um, I, I learned the benefit of color coding very quickly. One of my mixing heroes, Chris Lord Algae, um, I was watching one of his mix session videos once and he talked about uh, the importance of organizing and uh, organizing a session pretty much and part of that was color coding so I was like okay I'll you know I'll see I'll try it and sure enough guys he he was 100% on the money because I've noticed a huge uh, change uh, improvement I should say with my mixes and uh, music producing sessions since I've decided to be more uh, anal with you know creating structure in my in my mixes and in my projects um, I know every time I see red that's gonna be drums I know every time I see blue that's gonna be bass you know it just helps you to make sense of things better and it helps you to identify things faster and it just helps you to make faster decisions uh, trust me it's it sounds elementary like a very basic tip but it really does make a huge difference and I would highly uh, encourage you to try it. Anyway, moving on, I also have a bass DI channel set up and ready to go. As you can see, I've even got the record button ready because bass is my primary instrument that I play. Um, so I've got that ready to go. I also do have a, uh, a MIDI bass track ready to go in case I'm wanting something more, um, less natural I guess <laughs> I don't know what the word I was searching for is but you know what I mean I've got a hip-hop sub bass that I really enjoy uh, ready to go I've also noticed that I tend to use this plugin by waves a lot in my music the electric 88 piano uh, just a great great vibe I, yeah like I said I just use it a ton so I decided just to have it in here in case I want to use it because odds are I will use it. Um, but even if I don't, I can always delete the channel. It, that's way easier than, you know, setting it up from scratch. So it's there if I want it. Also have a guitar track. I do have a plugin on it, but apparently I need to update it so that I can use it. But it's the Waves GTR plugin. Got that set up and ready to go talked about vocals so on to effects I've got reverb um, right now I don't really have a uh, a typical reverb that I like to use it kind of changes from song to song so just you know for now I have the standard Ableton reverb on here even though I don't really don't really like the standard reverb on Ableton uh, it, it's there I've, I've got it ready to go uh, just for, you know, have to, to have some reverb on there, even if I end up changing it. Next, I've got delay. I actually do uh, use the simple delay on Ableton almost always, so that's ready to go. My next uh, return track I've got is what I like to call a drum squash. Um, this is using parallel compression to make my drums sound bigger. If you're not familiar with parallel compression, I do have a separate video where I went into detail on what that is. I will make sure to throw a card in this video that will lead you to that video if you're interested in checking that out. But basically all it's doing, uh, I'm sending all of my drums to this return track. As you can see on the kit, I've got C all the way cranked. So all of my drums are going to this channel and then I just compress the crap out of it with the CLA 76 by Waves. 
and uh, this just really helps to you know bring out that extra oomph uh, for the drums if I really really want them to hit hard so and then I'll use the fader as much as I need to to blend it into the mix so I've got that ready last but not least uh, on my master fader I've got a few plugins on here but most of them are disabled because uh, you know I don't want anything to uh, mess with the master fader until uh, I've finished my mix some some mixers do the opposite some first start with processing the master and then mix um, I've never really been a big fan of that approach so I just disable all these and wait till I'm done mixing so first I do have utility on here this is here just in case uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I try to set a healthy balance between everything when I'm mixing so that it doesn't uh, clip the master fader, or in other words, go past the zero mark. But if I'm feeling kind of lazy and just want to use this, I will use the utility, bring it down, you know, 2, 3 dB. Um, is that cheating? Uh I don't know. I don't really care, honestly, <laughs> because I've done this a few times and it doesn't seem to mess with the mix to my ears. So, hey, there are no rules in audio at the end of the day. You can do whatever you want to do. I sometimes do that. Um, but moving on, I've got the SSL bus compressor also from Waves on here ready to go. This is a great compressor to put on your master fader. Just really makes it punchy and really uh, brings out a lot of presence with your overall mix. Um, great plugin. I actually just recently started using this. I, uh, before this, used the glue compressor from Ableton. Um, and I actually still really do like that compressor a lot. I, in my opinion, it's, it's actually on par with the SSL bus compressor. Uh, I like it that much, but I, you know, just kind of wanted to broaden my horizons and try out the SSL. I'm a big fan of SSL anyway. I've got some of their other plugins uh, like the SSL EQ and the, um, the channel strip plugins. In fact, now that I think of it, I'm probably going to add the SSL EQ on uh, my Vo my Vox channel at the end of this. But uh, to wrap things up, I also have the Greg Wells Mix Centric plugin from Waves on my Master Fader. So this is one of those plugins I was very skeptical about. Um, used to any time I would see a plugin like this where it was, you know, one knob, to make your mix better. I always kind of viewed those plugins as, I guess, cheating, or even if not cheating, I just saw the plugins as like very gimmicky and I didn't take them seriously. Um, but one of my best audio mentors online, Graham from Recording Revolution, uh, spoke very highly of this plugin and I trust his opinion. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. Uh, and sure enough, he was absolutely right. This is a wonderful plugin. I try not to overuse it. Um, you know, at the most, I'll probably go here because I, I do want to maintain some of my natural mix. But uh, this this uh, plugin basically kind of it does a lot of things. Even though it's just one knob, uh, it's doing a lot of things under the hood to help you achieve a more pleasant sounding mix. There is multi-band compression, um, there is regular compression, I believe there is an EQ setting on it. So what all those things are doing, I don't know really. Um, but you can definitely tell when you start to bump this up, it changes your mix and starts to make it sound um, more dynamic and more uh, like everything has more balance. And I've yeah, I've become a really big fan of it, so much so that it is officially part of my mix template. So I've got that, and and last but not least, I have the stock limiter uh, with Ableton. I used to use the L1 by Waves, um, 
but I I don't know. I just I'm really drawn to the simplicity of Ableton's limiter and it works great. Just like the glue compressor of Ableton works great. I think the limiter works great and it's super easy to use. Um, and obviously the more plugins you use, the more it takes up your CPU. So that's another reason I decided to go with this instead of the L1. Um, but yeah, it is a great, great stock plugin. I don't feel like I'm sacrificing whatsoever, not using the L1. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching today. Uh, give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment if you have any questions. If you wanna be a part of my audio fam, all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button. And before you leave today, I just wanna mention, I do have a free gift for you at prodigycreationsnow.com. If you're still new to the audio game and you know, you're wanting to start recording your own music, um, but you don't really know where to start, this is gonna be a great guide for you, my friend, because literally in five steps or less, uh, I'm gonna teach you what you're gonna need in order to start uh, recording your music and living a better life, let's be honest. Because if you love music and you love making music, the more you do it, the more happy your life is gonna be. That's what I'm learning, my friends. You know, every time I uh, take a break from music and I come back to it, I'm like, why did I ever even take a break? <laughs> I love doing this. So visit prodigycreationsnow.com today if you would like to get that free gift. But otherwise, uh, thank you so much for watching today, my friends, and I'll see you in the next one.